Good morning. Good morning, everyone who have joined us today on Facebook and on YouTube. Welcome to Ministries of Hope Christian Church. Sunday morning Bible studies. We are under the pastoral leadership of senior pastor, Reverend Tori Williams, right across there in the black and white. Um, we are located at 385 um, Garrisonville Road right here in Stafford, Virginia. When you have a chance, when this pandemic is over, come on down and visit us. Um, right down below, we have um, Reverend Thompson and Brother Thompson. And right here to my left, we have Reverend uh, um, Brother Hutchings. Um, I'm Reverend Hutchings. Uh, we're in the book of uh, Numbers. Let us go to God in prayer so that the Lord can bless his words into our hearts. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for this another one of your wonderful day that you have given us the opportunity, dear Father God, to, to see. Thank you, Lord God, to for allowing us to realize that this is one of your mercies, Lord God, and we should be thankful for it every day that we get up and are able to walk around. Lord God, I'm asking you to open the hearts of those who are listening so that they will hear and apply your words to their lives. Thank you for this opportunity to give your word as you give it to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Over to you, um, Reverend Thompson. Thank you, Reverend Hutchings. Um, we're going to continue on at where we left off last study. Um, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, as we see, we have Pastor Williams right here at the top cat corner to me. Um, and what we went over last week, um, what she mentioned as far as all these tribes is that God does everything in decency and order. And um, we saw where everything he had them break it down, down to the letter, down to the spoon, down to the knife, the fork, the napkin, whatever you want to say, it was down to the mining thing. And also Pastor mentioned about the color cordedness of it all. So not only did he have it broken down, it was color corded. So it was very organized very orderly so that it was easy for this tribe or tribes, um, plural, all together to break down and set up, break down and set up anytime they had to move. There was no question about it. Everyone had their own jobs to do. So there was no confusion. Nobody had to argue about what, what they needed to do. What was this? What was that? It was already laid out, played out and done so that all you had to do was just make it work. It worked like clockwork. Um, so we're going to continue on with that vein. We left off last time talking about uh, the spirit of jealousy in verses uh, 12 through 15 of Numbers chapter five, uh, we left off talking about the spirit of jealousy and what happens with that and how they had to bring the person to uh, God at the door of the tabernacle um, in order to make sure things were right. We talked about uh, c connecting that to Jesus and then bringing the woman to him. And he's saying those without can sin cast the first stone. So we're going to continue on with that. And it goes into the test of bitter water. And it's uh, chapter five of Numbers, which is the fourth book of the Bible and starting at Genesis. And um, we're starting in verse 16, and we're all reading out of King James Version, unless we otherwise state. Um, so if Brother Mitch wants to start us off, verse 16 through, um, it goes on to 31. So verse 16, and Pastor will stop you in there, I'm sure. You start off at verse 16 and keep reading, and she'll Amen. stop you. Verse 16, and the priest shall bring her near and set her before the Lord. And the priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel and of the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle, the priest shall take and put it into the water. 18. And the priest shall set the woman before the Lord and uncover the woman's head and put the offering of memorial in her hands, which is the jealousy offering. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causes the curse. All right. Let's just stop right here before we go too far. Um, just read the commentary on 518, and that will explain the uncovering of the head. Yes, it has here to uncover one's head was a sign of mourning or disgrace. Mm -hmm. And we read that over in uh, Leviticus when we were talking about um, the uncovering of the head. Okay. All right. Um, let's just... Um, 
Amen. All right. Go ahead. And we didn't right. get to that yet. All right. Verse 18. No, 19. Oh, 19. And the priest shall charge her by an oath and say unto the woman, if no man hath lain with thee, and if thou hast not gone aside to uncleanness with another instead of thy husband, be thou free from this bitter water that causes the curse. Hmm. 20. All right. Uh, one thing, I'm, that's what I was looking for right there, the bitter water. This is different from the bitter water that we read back with Moses. Yeah. Okay. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Whenever he, the, they couldn't drink the water because it was bitter. Yeah. And then God told him to throw this uh, stick, bush, whatever it is, into the water, and it took the bitterness mm -hmm. away. This is different from that bit of water. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. And go on to 20. But if thou hast gone aside to another instead of thy husband, and if thou be defiled, and some man hath lain with thee beside thine husband. Then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing, and the priest shall say unto the woman, The Lord make thee a curse and an oath among thy people. When the Lord do it, make thy thigh not from thy to rot, and thy belly to swell. 22. And this water that causes the curse shall go into thy bowels, to make thy belly to swell and thy thigh to rot. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. Mm. 23. And the priest shall write these curses in the book, and he shall blot them out with the bitter water. And he shall cause women to drink the bitter water that causes the curse, and the water that causes the curse shall enter into her and become bitter. 25. Then the priest shall take the jealousy offering out of the woman's hand and shall wave the offering before the Lord and offer it upon the altar. And the priest shall take a handful or of the offering, even the memorial thereof, and burn it upon the altar, and afterwards shall cause the woman to drink the water. And 27. And when he hath made her to drink the water, then it shall come to pass that if she be defiled and have done trespass against her husband, that the water that causes the curse shall enter into her and become bitter, and her belly shall swell and her thigh shall rot, and the woman shall be a curse among her people. 28. If the, if, and if the woman be not defiled, but be clean, then she shall be free and shall conceive seed. This is the law of jealousies. When a wife goeth aside to another instead of her husband and is defiled. Mm. Verse 30. Or when the spirit of jealousy cometh upon him and he be jealous over his wife and shall set the woman before the Lord and the priest shall execute upon her all this law. Then shall the man of guiltless from iniquity and this woman shall bear her iniquity. Amen. 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 What I was seeing here, starting verse, um, say around 18 and 19, you know, whenever he says that we're, they tell us, uh, the Bible tells us we are not to make a vow or an oath and then go back on it. But I see here, similar to like they taking her before the priest and she has to, um, it says the priest shall charge her by an oath. That's in verse uh, 19. Now, that's kind of like taking a person and they lay their hands on the Bible before yeah. God. Because you can go before a priest. You're supposed to tell the truth. And nowadays, well, I think they're uh, getting rid of that now. But you see them in the court, put your hands on the Bible. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. And this is what it just, when I was reading that, it kind of jumped out to me. This was similar to what we see today. You're supposed when they take you before the priest, that's when the truth is supposed to come out. Mm -hmm. Supposed mm -hmm. to. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, I also see where he um, that's um, accusing a person mm -hmm. without knowing. 
you know, said innocent until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. That's when a man was jealous and taken his wife before the priest only on what was in his mind, not what he knew that had happened, but he was assuming she had been with someone. Amen. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I see, and what it, I wrote here, but on 20, uh, the water that causes uh, the curse shall go into her bowel. Also, remember I told you, uh, the, said that once she drank that water, then her bowels, it would go into the bowels and her belly would sweat and her legs would rot. Now, a lot of times in today's vernacular, what we believe is what we get. Yeah. Who's to say she wasn't innocent? But if she believed in this priest rather than believing in God, it could have caused that reaction. I'm not going against the Bible. I'm just telling you in today. What we believe, that's the reason why he tells us death and life are in the power of the tongue yeah. and whatsoever man thinketh. We have to believe that God is the, um, not in curses or whatever. He's in, um, anyway, in other words, he's there for you. If you go to him with the truth, it said the truth shall what? Make you what? Free. And they said, if uh, all of this um, didn't occur, if she, if her belly didn't swell, her leg didn't rot, then she was guilty. But what if she had not been guilty? Or what if she had been guilty? That's just, my, that's my take on it. Okay. What do you all have on that? What, what, I, um, what, what the Lord brought to my mind is, um, you remember that in those days, uh, the sin was was taken to the priest to, for um, and and you have to to kill a goat or give your sacrifices and stuff like that. So when you do a sin of omission that only you know about, there had to be a way for it to come to light so that you can um, get forgiveness for it. Now, in comparison to to today's, um, we don't have to take any any offering to any priest or anything. God is our judge. Uh, Jesus is our priest. Jesus is the one that we has to go before. And he already knew, know if we are guilty or we are innocent. He already can see if we did the sin, yes or no. So, um, and if we don't um, uh, ask for forgiveness for the sins that only us and God know about, then it's going to present itself in your life that you know that's why sometimes you say it's your sin that makes you sick or whatever like that it's like you know it's coming forth because it's 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 causing you to it's it's coming to the surface because you it's a sin of omission you're the only one know about it god know about it and just like when um um da, uh, david um, sin and and think that um, he wasn't asking forgiveness for it. God had to bring it to his attention, and so God brings the the innermost sin to your attention so that you can then ask forgiveness for it or repent from it. Because if you sometimes if your sin is not bring to the foremost part of your uh, uh, attention, you try you tend to forget that you already sinned. You tend to forget that you did it because you already. All right. How does that relate to her back then? Whenever we're talking about this woman, how does that relate to her? Well, it relates to her because now um, he's she sins and she it's only her. If, if she's guilty, she's the only one that knows about it. So when you go, um, God, um, when you go to take him to the priest and 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 you they did all these rituals and stuff and and it, they allowed the stomach to swell and stuff now your 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 sin of omission is coming forefront to everybody because you um have committed that sin if you have not committed that sin then you'll be okay all right no we're not gonna go any deep i was gonna hit it with something else but mm -hmm. i'll leave it at that and who's well, to I say that that bit of water i mean that water and that dust from the floor is not going to cause problems right okay I, I so we we can't thank god for jesus 
Amen. Right? I wouldn't want to drink any dirt from, from the floor, the floor to no. put it in my stomach because I would be thinking about that dirt and that filth that's going in. All right. And Reverend Thomas, you started to say what? Um, what they have pointed out to me is that this is the original, like you do today, like you were talking about, um, that it goes on with where you first started at talking about um, God, the, the kind of you're going before God and you're taking an oath. And then, which is what we do today in court, you take the oath, you put your hand on the Bible. But then the second part of that is... Um, uh, when you go now, it's getting to the point like today they have lie detector test. Mm -hmm. This is almost like the first lie detector lie detector test. Test. Right. it reminds me of mm -hmm. is that because even though you're drinking stuff from the ground and all that, God is still blessing it. This is something right. that's ordained by God. Yeah. So it's not going to do what he doesn't intend for it to do because Amen. he is God. So yeah. what I saw from this, what God had me glean from it. And this is just my understanding is that. Um, when you see her, she comes in and she's innocent. When she drinks this tonic, God will cause nothing to happen. Just like Amen. Paul got by the serpent, nothing happened. He wasn't poisoned. Amen. So yeah. like when she drinks it, God will cause nothing to happen. But if she did sin, if there was that, then yeah. she drinks it and it messes up her bowels to the point where she can't produce children anymore. You can't produce another life. That's your punishment, you know, Amen. because down here where it says that um, uh, in 30 or when the spirit of jealousy come upon him, where it talks about he becomes guiltless because already, as it said in prior parts of it, that the guy is not omitted from the sin either. It's not just her who's getting getting the brunt of this, as it said um, in 15, you know, in verse 14, where it says, if it comes upon him, jealous, his wife to foul, he talks about that. But it also talks about where the guy has some props, some, some, he'd be put to death too, not just her. And then you go here where it talks about, I'm trying to find where it says, okay, in 27. And when he had made her to drink the water, then it will come to pass that if she be defiled or done a trespass against her husband, that the water will cause a curse that falls on her. It'll become bitter. Her belly shall swell and it'll rot and the woman shall curse and be a curse among the people. So that's if she's guilty, that happens. But then it says, and if the woman be not defiled, but be clean, then she shall be free and shall conceive seed. So yes. it's not going to mess up her womb because no, if, she, if, if she is clean from mm -hmm. this sin, then she'll continue producing. She'll continue to be able to give life. Just like we saw in um, back in Exodus where, you know, they were lying or was it Genesis where uh, they were lying and saying, this is my sister Abraham did. And then God wind up shutting up all those wounds of them, of, of the Egyptians. So when you're looking at that, that's what it looks. It, to me, it's like, this is the first lie detector. You know, the lie detector is now falsy, but falsy. this is the first lie detector, the original from God, because now I'm giving you something to where, because if you think about this, it's a different different type of sin. It is something that is not public. Yes. So there's a whole bunch of gossip that goes around it. And now yes. there's something in the camp that would not normally be solved, mm -hmm. you know? And so now you're, you're messing up families in the process. It caused division and the long-term effects of this, we can see a lot going down. So God like, okay, this is the first one we see where he's coming through, where you're not bringing a sacrifice or something. You got to drink something and yes. God, if God before you, you know, if, if you if you're innocent, God before you, nothing will harm you. But That's if you be the God, it's gonna shut. It's yeah. gonna come. Okay, I got a message here, and it says uh, God put the priests in place for judgment of the people. That's right. So that's why the um, this came from one of our people here, and yeah. that's that's why you see they took them to the priests. Yeah. But it's mm -hmm. good when you think about every aspect. I like that you said that was a first lie detector. Yeah, it's true. But it's also, and some of your lie detecting equipment they have, if a person is good enough, they can yep. uh, get past that. Let's move on. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Amen. We're going into chapter six. If you're just joining us this morning, Numbers chapter six. Um, and Brother Chris, can you read one through 12? I'm sure it probably gets stopped there. And it talks about the laws regarding the Nazarite. Okay. Amen. Uh, verse six. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of Nazarite, 
to separate themselves unto the Lord. He shall separate himself from wine and strong drink and drink and shall drink no vinegar or wine or vinegar or strong drink. Neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat moist grapes or dried. All the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree, from the kernels even to the husk. All the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head unto the days be fulfilled. In the which he separated himself unto the Lord, he shall be holy and shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. All the days of his separate separate himself unto the Lord, he shall come at no dead body, come at no dead body. He shall not make himself unclean for his father or for his mother, for his brother or for his sister when they die, because the consecration of, of his God is upon his head. All the days of his separation he is holy unto the Lord. And if any man die very suddenly by him, and he hath defiled the head of his consecration, then he shall shave his head in the day of his cleansing. On the seventh day shall he shave it. And on the eighth day he shall bring two turtles or two young pigeons to the priest, to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering, and make an atonement for him, for that he sinned by the dead, and shall hallow his head that same day. And twelve, he shall consecrate unto the Lord the days of his separation, and shall bring a lamb of the first year for a trespass offering. But the days that were before shall be lost, because his separation was defiled. All right, we know that the, a Nazarite that was like a volunteer, um, say, for instance, like God call you, but that was a volunteer where that person was willing to set aside um, themselves for the Lord. All right, and I can see people like um, nuns, monks, priests, they dedicate themselves to God. But whenever they dedicated themselves to be a Nazarite, but he said all the days of their life, more or less, they would be dedicated to the Lord. All right, someone read, please, for me, um, the commentary, six and two. <clears throat> six and two. Unlike the priestly and levical service, which was limited to males of a certain age and ancestral heritage, the vow of a Nazarite was a special dedicatory service for the Lord that was open to females. Though only... Aaronic priests were permitted to conduct cultic rituals in the tabernacle. Any person could dedicate his or her life in the service of the Lord for a specific period of time. Samson was dedicated as a Nazarite for the purpose of delivering Israel from Philistine oppression. Samson and Samuel were both Nazarites from the womb. From the womb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. And we know that... Um, because of Samson's um, kindly disobedience and Delilah, Delilah cutting off his hair, we see the results of him being disobedient to God. What happened? Okay. And uh, <clears throat> it says from the womb, because God told, I think his mother, Menorah, that mm -hmm. she was going to conceive this child. But he would, had to be a Nazarite from, mm -hmm. uh-oh. Is that the right one? Everything's happening this morning. He was going to be a, a Nazarite from birth unto death. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? And he was yeah. until death. It may have been a death, but that was one that he opted for. But whenever we read Samson, we'll see the um, results of being a Nazarite and the results of going against God's law. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's interesting too because when uh, she conceived, they told don't don't drink of any wine. Right. Either, and that well, that's sense. part of being a Nazarite. Yeah, that's, I was, that's what we'll see in here. No wine, yeah. no liquor, no shaving of the head. In this uh, between six um, uh, six birth, one birth and three and four. Yeah, they give you the whole list that they are not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. No strong drink, no wine, no liquor, no shaving of the head. 
no coming near dead bodies. Remember the Samson took a uh, honeycomb out of the caucus of a, a lion? He mm -hmm. wasn't supposed to do that. But they give you everything that we need to know what a Nazarite is to be and not to be is right here. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. He read through 12. Um, okay, we're going into the days of separation fulfilled, and that's 13 through 21, Brother Mitch. Amen. Verse 13. And this is the law of the Nazarite when the days of his separation are fulfilled, he shall be brought unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall offer his offering unto the Lord, one he lamb of the first year without blemish for a burnt offering, and one lamb of the first year without blemish for a sin offering, and one ram without blemish for peace offerings. And a basket of unleavened bread cakes of fine flour mingled with oil and wafers of unleavened bread anointed with oil in their meat offering and their drink offerings. And the priest shall bring them before the Lord and shall offer his sin offering and his burnt offering. And he shall offer the ram for a sacrifice and peace offerings unto the Lord with a basket of unleavened bread. The priest shall offer also his meat offering and his drink offering. And the Nazarite shall shave the head of his separation at the door of the tabernacle of the con congregation and shall take the hair of the head of the, his separation and put it in the fire with the son of the sacrifice of the peace offering. And the priest shall take the sodden shoulder of the ram and one unleavened cake out of the basket and one unleavened wafer and shall put them upon the hands of the Nazarite after the hair of his separation is shaven. And the priest shall wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. This is holy for the priests with the wave breast and heave shoulder. And after the Nazarite made drink wine. This is the law of the Nazarite who hath vowed in of his offering unto the Lord of his for his separation. Beside that his hand shall get according to the vow which he vowed. So he must do after the law of his separation. Amen. Okay, amen. And we can see here how a Nazarite, once he um, dedicated himself to the Lord, what the things that he's supposed to offer, what he's supposed to take. But if we look at um, Romans 12, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice unto God which is your reasonable service. So we don't have to take uh, the lambs, the turtle doves, the pigeons in order to consecrate ourselves or to give ourselves over to God. He says, present your bodies a living sacrifice unto God, which is our reasonable service. So when we do that, we give our bodies over to God. Then if we do it and do it and the meanings that we are going to serve him. We're giving up the sins. We're giving up whatever was in our life. Yeah, we're going to sin daily. But those things that we know that what we were doing, we are going to present ourselves to God. That Those are the lambs. Those are the uh, turtles and the pigeons and all of that stuff. We are sacrificing Ourself, we're setting ourselves aside. Amen. Say so those of us that's in ministry, you're setting yourself aside. What are we doing now? We're trying to do the work of the Lord. This is not something that we had to do. Amen. We're presenting ourselves a living sacrifice. Praise God. That's just my take on it. All right. Amen. Door is open. Go ahead. Amen. I agree 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, living sacrifices. Yeah. Anybody else have anything else on that before we go on? Yeah. Amen. Now we're going into the blessings on the children of Israel. And that's uh, verses 22 through 27. I'll read. 
Um, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I I will bless them. Amen. Amen. And, mm. and some, a lot of uh, times we use that as a benediction, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a little bit interesting here. Someone read the um, um, commentary on 2625. The face reflected in righteous character of God, the prayer evoked God's gracious favor, which is beyond measure. God's grace would be exemplified when he brought the second generation into the promised land after the rejection of that gift by the generation delivered from Egypt. Amen. We'll be getting to that soon. Um, to lift up one's consonants is to direct one's full attention toward the needs and desires of another person. The smile of God on the community of faith would bring peace, wholeness, or well-being as his covenant mercy came to fruition in the life of the community. Amen. Okay. Amen. And uh, just do 27 for me, please, and then we'll. Um, the name of God is a reflection of the fullness of his character. When Jesus spoke of coming in the name of the Father, he was evoking the fullness of God's character upon, upon his public ministry. Amen. Truth. Now, the thing of it is, whenever we say these benedictions, it's not just to hold up our hands and say it. It's not just to repeat after the minister or whomever. There is a meaning to everything we do Amen. and everything we say when it comes from the word of God. And I was happy to see that because too often we learn these things, yes, which is good, but yeah. also we have to learn there is a meaning behind that. Yeah. Okay. Amen. Yeah. Mm. That's good. Because that, that um, brought to me, you know, my, or my attention where it says, you know, where you, when you when you say when you come in the name of the Lord, you got to have that, you know. Um. You got to really believe it and, you know, be full heartedly doing that way. When you speak to someone, if you're in the ministry and you're representing him, you got to put your whole heart behind it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Very good. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. It's true. Mm -hmm. Because anybody can give lip service. Amen. Yeah. But whenever you speak from the heart, God's got it. But when you give in lip service, that's for yeah. you. Amen. Yeah. Generally, it doesn't even touch those around you. Because people can see through phoniness. Amen. Amen. And a lot of times I've seen so many holy folk that just, just, just want to make me sick. Say it. But you can also tell when that yeah. person's spirit meets your mm -hmm. spirit, you can tell yeah. if they're coming in truth. Yes. Amen. You know, you can holler, uh, amen, praise the Lord, and, and cut hallelujah, and cut summer sauce, and hallelujah, all of that stuff mm -hmm. all day long. But until mm -hmm. you touch God and it's true mm -hmm. in you, it means absolutely nothing. Amen. Yes. Okay. I'll leave that alone. Mm -hmm. You're right on point. <laughs> Amen. No, Amen. Because a lot of people, as God says, they come in my name and they weren't sent at all. So right. you, you have to really be careful. And, and I love it too here where it's talking about this God's graciousness and his favor that falls upon you. If you just be an obedient, you know, uh -huh. just being uh -huh. obedient to him and his will for, for you and your life, which is in his words, you know, that he left right. behind. And that is the Bible. And you have to know him in order to know his will. You have to get in him in order to know and he'll reveal it to you. And then all the promises and the peace that comes upon with that. And then I love it too, where it mentions Jesus, because we were talking last night with the kids too. And it's like, we're under that grace period, you know, because we since he said the son of man got to be lifted up where he was talking to Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. And that's what we were looking at last night, just him talking to Nebuchadnezzar and him asking. He's like, you're a teacher of this word. 
word. As Mitch was mentioning, you're a teacher of this word and you don't know these things, you know, because in order for you to teach someone, you have to know. And so he's like, he had to be lifted. The son of man has to be lifted up. And because Jesus was lifted up, that's why this is so important. And as pastor was saying, you know, we don't just do stuff to do it. There's meaning behind it. That's why it's so important to know why Jesus sacrifice was so big and so vast because of all this stuff we have been reading from Leviticus until now is because Jesus died for us, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. And so that belief part, you, you got to believe in him. You have to do something and that belief part. And this is what is showing us the further is what, how far he has brought us to where Jesus died for us. And now we're able to have access to God. We're able to have access to that blessing and that all that God says to us, you know, we don't have to go drink a tonic. We don't have to go and sacrifice a goat. You know, we don't have to go as, as yeah. pastor was saying too. we come and we confess with our mouth, tell God, look, I did it. I did yeah. it. I sinned and I'm sorry. And I repent of that sin. And then he said it was separated as far as the east is from the west. But if you continually live in a place of denial, then there can't be no no change there, no blessing there. Because as he said before, you know, um, and I'll, I'll close with this, finish talking. But as he said before, um, we were talking last time and what God says, is like, even if you have something against your brother or they hold something from you, don't you come offer your gift to me. Go take it to them first. You got to go back and repent with them and make it right with them first or else God won't hear you. Even places in the Bible talks about if a husband, the way the husband treats the wife, he won't even hear their prayers. So you got to make sure that before you do, you got to go make it right and then go back and offer your gift to God, as it says. Mm -hmm. So like, that's what we have to do as far as repenting and, and repentance is that change. Cause that his consonants, he, he wants to love on you, but you got to be ready to love on him too. As presenting your body. Yes. Yes. As a living sacrifice. There you go. Right. You have, you have to, and your body, that's everything. Your being, yes. your entire being, you have to mm. present that to him. Go yes. to him. And like, as you said, repent, because all of us, we've sinned in the past. Yes, We Lord. will sin in the future. But he yes. said, don't let the sun go down on your wrath okay. unless you repent. Okay. Amen. Let's move it on. Offerings of the Amen. tribal princesses. Uh, one through three. <clears throat> Brother, um, brother Hutchings. And it came to pass on the day that Moses had fully set up for the tabernacle and had anointed it and sanctified it and all the instruments thereof, both the altar, all the vessels thereof, and had anointed them and sanctified them. That the princes of Israel, of Israel, heads of, heads of the house of their fathers who were the princes of the tribe, princes of the tribe, and were over them that were numbered, offered. And they brought their offering before the Lord, six covered wagons and twelve oxen, a wagon for two of the princes, and for each one an ox, and they brought them before the tabernacle. Amen. Amen. Um we read about some mm -hmm. other princes down the line. No, I'm not mm -hmm. supposed to ask, but can anybody tell me who those princes were, the ones that we read about? It was um, they're on Ishmael's side. Ishmael, that's right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Look, she, she made sure we got it. <laughs> <laughs> on Ishmael's I'll, side. I'll be reprimanded later by that, but that's okay. <laughs> 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 We're supposed to get something, something out of it as we go along. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, anybody on those verses? Amen. I kind of like Stark Man says that every everything there had to be set aside, had to be blessed according mm. to Moses. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Mm. Almost like um like he did with Noah, whatever he called, I mean not Noah, um Adam, whatever he called the animals, that was what they were. You know, mm -hmm. so he gave him that authority extended to him of Moses, you know, so that whatever Moses 
said go. And even as we saw last week, it said by the hand of Moses, they were counted, you know. Uh -huh. So it's like God gives you the command, but you got to do something about it. You, right. you got to go out and, and actually do it. You know, the word. Faith without works is dead. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Come on with them scriptures. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. We have offerings given to the Levites. Um, and that's verse four through nine. Amen. Verse four. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take it of them that they may be to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. And thou shalt give them unto the Levites, to every man according to his service. And Moses took the wagons and the oxen and gave them unto the Levites. Two wagons and four oxen he gave unto the sons of Gershon, according to their service. And four wagons and eight oxen he gave unto the sons of Marai, according unto their service, under the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron, the priest. But unto the sons of Kohath he gave none, because the service of the sanctuary belonging unto them was that they should bear upon their shoulders. Mm, amen. Mm. Amen. All right. So we had going through last week the um uh last study, we went through Marari and their duties, Grishon and their family's duties, and as far as the tabernacle, and then Koath. And remember, Koath was the ones who were responsible for the most holy things their family. So we have them now. He's saying he gave them none because the service of the sanctuary belonged unto them. And it's, it's also reminding me too of like Joshua, where he talked about the Levi Le Levites, even though they didn't have an inheritance of land, they got towns like around, around others, uh, the other tribes, because they were ministering and their, their whole uh, service was the service of God. So we see there, that's the honor. You're carrying the burden of the service of God. That's your, that's your honor, you know, that you should be on their shoulders. So they, you don't get the monetary stuff there because God is that. And he said, he going to take care of you. You know, nobody leaves home house or nothing and not be returned to you a hundredfold. So that's interesting. Yes, it is. Okay. And we still see that um, Moses is carrying out his instructions. I've got a message here saying, wrap it up. So, oh, thank God for the phone. She be on it. <laughs> I'm gonna cut that phone off. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Um, this is so interesting that you know, um, we, we have to stay on track, stay on time, and um, thank God for you know keeping us on time and on track because we get so so mm -hmm. indulgent, so into the word of God that you know time doesn't even exist when we're when we're studying the word of God in our mind. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll go over to um, brother Mitch. Uh, what's your, your comment? <coughs> Uh, I guess my final thoughts in regards to what we you know read this morning is that um, you know we read about the laws that Nazarites had to follow, and, you know blessings that were given. It's just that um, when God command you know you to do something, you know fulfill your duties, and you know just if, you know if you have to be get prepared and you know read your Bible so that you're ready so that when you know you're called upon called upon to do certain things. You know, to fit, to fulfill His glory, you know, He wants you to be ready. Amen. So to to you know, read the Bible, study with you know, you know, with people, you know, get online like we're on now. Um, to continue to build your your faith and you know, continue to up you know, uplift your your spirit so that you're ready when you um called upon. Amen. Amen, brother Hutton. I just want to take this opportunity to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. And and to just remember that we should be giving thanks on a daily basis, not just on Thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Um, Reverend Thompson. Um, yes, I want to make a quick correction when we were talking about um, Numbers chapter uh, five and the bitter water. There was no punishment. It didn't mention punishment for for the man who defiled the woman. It didn't mention it. It mentions it elsewhere, but it doesn't mention it there. So I wanted to correct that. Um, so I misspoken that. But um, my final thought would be 
um, piggybacking off of uh, Brother Mitch, just making sure that we're always be always ready, as Pastor said. She drummed that in our head halfway. Be always ready. And that's what we want to do is continue to be ready so that God can use you. You know, you want to make sure that we're presenting our body as a living sacrifice daily so that we can be used. We don't want anything to cloud us being used by God. You know, so when and when you ask him to use you, trust and believe he's going to use you. If you say, Lord, not your will, my will, thy will be done, not my will. I want your will to be done in my life. He will use you if you allow him to use you. So um, just continue to continue to stay with it, continue to stay with it, studying the word of God. Sometimes it may be hard as we see where it said um, last week, where it talks about it was their burden to bear. Sometimes it's going to feel like a burden. Ministry sometimes may feel like a burden. He said, you know, don't get weary and well doing. So you want to continue on doing the will of God and he'll give you the strength that you need on those times when you feel like you can't continue on. So just continue staying with it. If there's anything else that um, you don't understand, we're all here. Leave comments, leave questions, you know, email the questions or whatever. We're willing to answer, we're willing to help look through it. We're willing to search through this Bible with you until God gives you the answer that, that he would have you to have. So that's all I would say. God bless you all and uh, celebrate Thanksgiving, I guess. Happy Amen. Thanksgiving. There you go. As um, what I got from what um, <laughs> Brother Mitch was saying, number one, the obedience. Number two, study. And through studying, that's going to strengthen our faith. Mm -hmm. And once we're in faith, we have to walk by faith. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, Brother Chris, <coughs> everybody a happy Thanksgiving. And I pick it back on that and say like a safe Thanksgiving. Yes, we'd like to meet with our families, but it could, if we do that, it could wipe out our entire family because there are people out here that's looking like me, looking like you, and they're sick, but don't even know it. Mm -hmm. Asymptomatic. So mm -hmm. as you said, stay safe. And while I'm doing this, I often, I try to thank you all as much as I possibly can while we're on broadcast, but I'd like to do it where others could hear it. I thank God for each of you because if in order to get this word, to be able to discuss this word, we have to study this word. Amen. And to be able to expound on it, I thank God for each of you. Be encouraged because when you bless God, God will bless you. Thank God. Okay. Um, and Reverend Thompson, as you said, we have to be ready at all times. Amen. And staying in the will of God. Not our way, but his way. As you often hear me say, let go of Seth. Step back and let God work it out. Mm -hmm. Because he is the one, he knows all. Mm -hmm. Everything that's going on around us today, and they say that things are getting worse. The death rate is going up. But be encouraged. Mm -hmm. Why do I say that? Because God's got it. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It may not look like it, but God's got it. He Amen. is there. He's weeding out some. And yes, a lot of Christians are going, but God's got it. Just Amen. be encouraged in all you do. Keep the faith and stay in the will of God. Amen. 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 Thank everyone for their um, last encouraging words. And all I got to say is just surrender all to God and he will take you through. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day. Thank you, God, for spreading your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us an understanding. I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, that everybody who um, who view this, this broadcast, I'm asking you to, to speak to their hearts and help them to take something, glean something from every word that you put out today. I'm asking you, Lord God, to just bless us as this Thanksgiving rolled around. Keep us all safe and help us to continue worshiping and thanking you for all you've done for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being with us as you always have been. Um, and I want to say happy Thanksgiving to everyone. 
and uh, to join us also again um, on Wednesday night for the continuation of this Bible study. Also pray with us on Tuesday night because you know we can't leave prayer out at all. We got to continue talking to God every day, every week, not just on Tuesday night, but pray with us corporately on Tuesday night from 7.30 to 8 p.m. And the number to call to pray with us is 605-313 5388 with an access code of 379088 pound. Another Sunday school will be here with you discussing the word next Sunday at 9:30 a.m. on Ministries of Hope Facebook. Um, Ministries of Hope YouTube, and um, we'll have our Sunday morning sermons after this at 10.30 a.m. on Ministries of Hope Facebook, Ministries of Hope YouTube, and also sometimes on Instagram. Donation to this ministry can be made at Ministries of Hope um, Christian Church .com using the square or the paper remember there's no distance so you can join us if you wish um, you can become a member of ministries of hope christian church just inbox us um email us um and just leave a comment leave your name call or number and and we can um pray with you and extend the right hand of fellowship thank you again for all you've done and you have a blessed week